Hi guys, welcome to the final two episodes of the K-drama The Worst of Evil. With a plot spoiler alert, let's get to it. We flash back two days before the trading, where Mingu meets with Baknam, who is one of Kisu's men. With the help of Baknam and other police officers, Mingu realizes that it was Yu Zhang that he saw with Ji Chol. He learns that she is married to Jun Mo. On the other hand, Ji Chol tells Yu Zhang that he is going to start fresh after he finishes his deal, and takes her to a new house telling her that it is where they will be living. She tries to convince Ji Chol to stop going through with the deal, but he refuses to do so. She also goes to Jun Mo and asks him to give up on the investigation, but Jun Mo too refuses to give up. On the day of the trade, Jun Mo and Ji Chol do the trade as planned. Jun Mo notices the name of the ship that transported the drugs, and goes to the toilet when they reach the shores. He writes down the name of the ship before leaving with Ji Chol to meet the Japanese. The police who are secretly watching them then retrieve the note Jun Mo left, and learns the Chinese ship that was involved in the trade. On their way to the next port to meet the Japanese, a truck speeds toward their car and crashes into them. We see that it was Kung Jin and he steals the drugs and leaves. Ji Chou regains consciousness and manages to escape from the vehicle with Jun Mo before it explodes. He Sen who is following them helps Ji Chou and Jun Mo, and is shocked to hear that it was Kung Jin who caused the accident and stole the drugs. Ji Chou realizes that Zheng Bei is behind it as he is the only one who is aware of the route, other than the three of them. Yu Hong learns about the explosion as he waits with his team for Jun Mo and Ji Chou to arrest them while doing the trade with the Japanese. He is relieved to hear that no one was in the exploded car, but the mission to arrest them fails. Ji Chol, Jun Mo, and He Sen return to their office and instruct their men to search for Zheng Bei and Kung Jin. Ji Chol then provides Jun Mo with a list of dealers, and tells him to check if Zheng Bei has contacted any of them. Ji Chol also discovers that Zheng Bei has stolen all the money he had in his safe, and left his watch inside it. Jun Mo takes the list to Chung Sik and Du Hong, also providing them with the phone numbers that Zheng Bei and Kung Jin used, when they were part of Ji Chol's gang. Ji Chol informs Oyama about the incident, and Oyama expresses disappointment, stating that the incident will cause damage to both of them. Oyama gives Ji Chol one week to find the stolen drugs and hand them over. On the other hand, Min Gu goes to the police station where Jun Mo works and learns that he is on sick leave. Jun Mo too meets with Heron, and confesses to her about the trade apologizing to her. To his surprise Heron acknowledges him for not running away and telling the truth, and she offers to help him resolve the situation. While they talk, Heron also reveals the place she lived in China. Jun Mo feels guilty about involving Heron as she seems to be in love with him. He suggests that she go back to China until things in Korea get sorted out. Reluctantly Jun Mo informs Du Hong about where the Chinese are based. The Chinese government receives this information and decides to locate and surround the drug manufacturing factory, awaiting signals from the Japanese and Korean governments to make arrests. Du Hong becomes worried about Jun Mo and asks Chung Sik to go public with the investigation. But Chung Sik refuses to do so and instead suggests that Du Hong check on Yu Zhang, who is also concerned about Jun Mo. So Du Hong goes to see Yu Zhang, where he learns from her about Min Gu's visit to the police station where Jun Mo works. He then decides to meet with Min Gu. Yang Dae, on the other hand, goes to pick up Zhang Rol when he gets released. On their way back, Yang Dae hands him the profiles of Yu Zhang and her family. On seeing the details, Zhang Rol asks Yang Dae to take him to the police station. While they're there, they see Du Hong introducing himself as Jun Mo to Min Gu and walking into the police station. Yang Dae recognizes Du Hong and identifies him as the person he saw with Ms. Zhou. Min Gu shows Du Hong pictures of Yu Zhang with Ji Chol. To Min Gu's surprise, Du Hong lashes out at him for spying on other people's lives and angrily walks away, threatening him not to spy on his wife. Jun Mo informs Ji Chol that Hiran might get into trouble if they delay the payment. To his horror, he learns that Zheng Bei has stolen all of Ji Chol's money and they have no way to make the payment. Jun Mo then receives a call from Wu Zhang asking for a meetup. Reluctantly, Jun Mo goes to see her and finds Du Hong with her. They hand him the call log of Zheng Bei and Kung Jin, as well as the address of Zheng Bei's parents. Seeing how restless Jun Mo is, both Wu Zhang and Du Hong try to comfort him. But he lashes out at Wu Zhang, telling her to drop out from the investigation as she is distracting him, and at Du Hong for being the one who dragged both him and Wu Zhang into the investigation. Zhang Rol and Yang Dae away from his Zhou, and Zhang Rol threatens her to reveal what she did with Du Hong. She tells them that he is a narcotics officer, and had asked for her help to swap the documents. Zhang Rou makes her call Du Hong, and convinces him to come to her office. He then calls Jun Mo and asks him to come because Du Hong is also going to be there. When Du Hong gets there, Zhang Rou confronts him demanding to know the reason he's following them. Jun Mo arrives to find Du Hong beaten up by Zhang Rou. Zhang Rou discovers the real identity of Du Hong, and assumes that Du Hong, Wu Zhang, and Jun Mo are working together. He demands that Jun Mo stab Du Hong to prove that he is not working with the police. Jun Mo tries to convince Zhang Rol that he has nothing to do with Du Hong, so Zhang Rol shoots Du Hong. As Jun Mo and Zhang Rol then get into a fight, the police arrive and arrest Zhang Rol. While with Yu Zhang, Ji Chou receives a call from He Seng to inform him that they have caught Zhang Bei. So he hurries off to the office. 
When he gets there he finds Jung Bae Kung Jin and all his men including Hee Sung there. Jung Bae mocks Ji Chol's plan to step away from the gang to start a new business on his own. Ji Chol gets devastated to see that both Jung Bae and Hee Sung have plotted against him. Just then Min Gu walks in with an arrest warrant for Ji Chol. We see that Jung Bae, Hee Sung and Kung Jin meet Min Gu with the stolen drugs and hand them over to him. They promise to compensate him well if he agrees to join them instead of the Jajin group to which Min Gu agrees. So they ask for Min Gu's help to lock up Ji Chol in prison for life, assuring him that they will provide all the evidence needed. Wu Zhang watches as Ji Chol gets arrested by Min Gu. She informs Chung Sik about the arrest and that Min Gu has joined the Gundam Union. Chung Sik then informs Jun Mo who is waiting by the operating theater. Jun Mo goes to save Ji Chol and crashes into Min Gu's car, then drives off with Ji Chol. On the other hand, Du Hum dies. However, Chung Sik doesn't reveal it to Jun Mo, and he also asks Wu Zhang not to tell Jun Mo anything about Du Hung's death. Jun Mo learns that Jung Bae and He Sung don't know who the Japanese man who is involved in buying the drugs from them, so they will probably sell all the drugs they stole in Korea. Chung Sik decides to arrest all the drug dealers of the Gundam Union, so that Jung Bae has no option but to do the trade with the Japanese. Mingu tries to run a background check on Sung Ho, but becomes unable to do so, since the higher ups and the police keep interfering with it. So he goes to Jung Bae and He Sung and asks them about him. To his horror, he learns that Sung Ho came into the gang as Tao's cousin and claimed to be a childhood friend of Wu Jong. Jung Bae suggests to Mingu to tail Wu Jong and Hair on, since Ji Chol and Jun Mo would eventually go to meet them. Kung Sun then arrives at the Gundam Union and demands to pay them the money for the drugs. Jung Bae and He Sung ask him to set them up with the Japanese, pointing out that they got rid of the Jajin group, and Ji Chol, and even the cops are now backing them up. So Hera meets with them and agrees to continue the trade providing the location where the Japanese drug dealers will arrive. Apparently it was Jun Mo who convinced Hera to meet with Jung Bae and He Sung and to share the location of the Japanese trade. He then informs Chung Sik about the trade. Detective Go on the other hand attends Du Hong's funeral and meets with Du Hong's wife. Upon seeing Du Hong's photo he realizes that he has been pretending to act as Jun Mo this entire time. So he asks her about Jun Mo. He learns that Jun Mo is pretending as Sung Ho and informs Min Gu about it. Min Gu then goes to see Hair on and tells her about Jun Mo. Min Gu asks her to tell him the whereabouts of Sung Ho, so he can arrest him and ensure that he goes to prison for life. Heron then makes a call to Jun Mo, and he realizes that Heron knows the truth about him. So he tells her not to stay in Korea or go back home, and instead suggests that she stay in Hong Kong until everything gets sorted out. Heron goes back to Min Gu and stabs him to death, saying she is getting tired of the business as well. When Kung Sun arrives he finds Min Gu dying. Upon seeing Detective Go waiting for Min Gu he urges Heron to flee, and decides to take the fall for her. So Heron leaves Korea. Ji Chol and Jun Mo on the other hand go to the port to intervene in the transaction, as Ji Chol wants to take the money. The Korean police are also at the location to arrest all those involved. When Ji Chol is about to confront Jung Bae and He Sung, Jun Mo points a gun at him and reveals that he is a police officer. He handcuffs Ji Chol to the steering wheel before heading off to confront Jung Bae and He Sung. However, he leaves the car key and the keys for the handcuffs for Ji Chol. Ji Chol watches as Jung Bae and the others get arrested. At the same time the Chinese factory is raided by the police, the Japanese cops arrest Oyama, and the Korean police arrest everyone at the Union. Jun Mo returns home and learns about Wu Hong's death. On their way back after Jun Mo pays his respects to Du Hong, Wu Zhang wonders if they could go back to how things were before. When they get home they find Ji Chol waiting for them heartbroken to finally realize that they are married and have been deceiving him from the start. He criticizes Wu Zhang for making him believe they were in love. He then points the gun at himself, saying that they would never be happy again, but Jun Mo shoots him in the chest. We also see that Jun Mo is wearing both the wedding ring and the watch that Ji Chol gifted him. After some time we see Jun Mo and Wu Zhang getting awarded and promoted for their investigation. Du Hong's wife accepts the award on his behalf. Jun Mo then salutes Du Hong's photo and leaves the ceremony as Yu Zhang watches. He then goes to Ji Chol's grave. Jun Mo smokes a cigarette which he leaves still lit on Ji Chol's grave alongside his wedding ring, and walks away suggesting to us that the worst of evil has consumed Jun Mo. Even though he got everything he wanted he had to lose everything he had. In the post credit scene we see a happier Jun Mo as Sung Ho with Ji Chol walking the Gunnam streets. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.